Hi, my name's Phil. I like to talk about politics. And last week I published a video where I talked to the guys from Excluded UK about the 3.8 million employees, freelance workers and small business owners who were completely excluded from the furlough schemes, leaving them only with inadequate support. This is the more complete interview with more information for those who may be one of the excluded unknowingly, or maybe you know someone who might be, or maybe you would just like to know more because there is a cause behind this. There is There are things that the group would like to see from the incoming Labour government, which has cross-party support, but needs more visibility for the cause. In addition, if you or someone you know is or might be affected, there are useful links in the description below. Should we start off then with who the excluded are exactly? Certainly. Um, well, Excluded UK was established in May 2020 and we represent the 3.8 million UK taxpayers who were excluded from parity of government financial support um, during COVID-19. And uh, the misconception is that it's small businesses and limited company directors but we have identified over 20 groups, um, including new starters, new businesses, uh, newly self-employed, PAYE freelancers, those denied furlough, those made redundant before 19th of March 2020. Um, there are those on maternity and parental adoption leave. Uh, and then people whose personal circumstances um, have affected their entitlement, for example, pensions, bereavement allowance, carers allowance, students, arms forces, veterans, and many, many more. Yeah, so, I mean, in, in, in fact, the University of Bristol did some research on this and they found that 34% of those excluded were basically contract or agency workers of some form or other. Because what's effectively happened is there were two furlough schemes. There was one for employed people. Yeah. But if you changed jobs at the wrong time, then you were excluded. Or if you were on quite casual work or zero hours contracts, you were excluded. There was another scheme for self-employed people. But if you, let's say you'd, I mean, I'd just become ironically self-employed at the time, but fortunately doing YouTube did, wasn't a problem um, because living in a cave was actually an advantage at that time. But yeah. if you Ooh. had just become self-employed at that time and you didn't have a 2018, 2019 tax return, then you couldn't access it. Or if you were like a freelance worker or something like that, where you had short contracts, then you'd struggled as well. And That's it's it, and it's amounted yeah. to 3.8 million people, which by my calculations, is about 11.5% of the entire workforce at the time. And more than the population of Wales. Hmm. We completely understand that um, it was unprecedented times. Um, we cannot fault the generosity and the speed at which the support schemes that were provided to people were rolled out. They were the most generous um, in, in Europe, we understand. However, there were 10%, or like you say, 10, 11% of the UK working population that were missed out. And despite bringing this to the attention of the government repeatedly, um, uh, we, we were completely ignored. And um, we had the largest APPG in history with 262 cross-party uh, MPs who were all begging the government to reconsider not providing the support. Mm. Um, and the we, we just got copy and paste answers uh, that, that we were a fraud risk, um, which obviously, you know, there will be some people that haven't declared their taxes correctly. But when you've got uh, those denied furlough, they're not self-employed. They don't have to declare their taxes to HMRC because that's done through payroll. Um, you know, maternity, uh, when they come off maternity, that that's when uh, that their issues uh, started. But again, they were on payroll. So this isn't a, always about uh, small businesses and limited company directors not de declaring taxes properly. And why should the majority be penalised for the few um, that, that, that don't play the system fairly? And our suggestions were that everybody got something rather than, ever, you know, 10% mm. getting nothing. Um, and again, uh, been completely um, ignored. Yeah. So what have been some of the consequences for, for some people then of this lack of support? Well, 
Um, obviously, uh, people were offered bounce back loans, loans being the operative word because it's debt. Mm. Um, one thing, you know, Rishi Sunak was, was very, uh, very big on, on, on promoting the fact that he was backing these bounce back loans. What he failed to mention was the criteria you had to have been trading for two years or more. Um, and obviously, a lot of the new starters, that was the reason they didn't qualify for the support teams in the first place. Um, there were a whole list of other criteria for bounce back loans. But like we say, it is um, debt. It's not the same support uh, that everybody else got. Uh, people have racked up credit card debt, personal loans. Uh, they've had to use their overdrafts. Uh, we've had people sold houses and their cars, family heirlooms. Uh, wedding rings and other personal sentimental jewellery. Uh, we had uh, people sleeping in their cars, and I'm not just talking individuals. This was whole families that were either sleeping in cars, caravans or tents. Um, people that used to donate to food banks, having to use food banks, that, that um, was really humiliating um, for them. Um, and then you, you've got the mental health crisis on top of the financial impact. Um, we created a member welfare team because we identified very quickly um, that yes, there was a financial impact, but not only were people afraid of the virus that everybody else is afraid of, but they were stressing that because they didn't get the same levels of support as everybody else, how were they going to cope? What were they going to do? Now, sadly, we know of 37 people who took their own lives because they couldn't see any other way forward. We've had um, hundreds of attempted suicides. Um, and fortunately, we have managed to save hundreds of lives and referred them on to the appropriate crisis support or mental health um, care teams. Um, Excluded UK, whilst funds allow, we do offer free counselling to our members and their immediate family. Um, and this predominantly um, is because family members, uh, like we had a, a nine-year-old little boy who tried to take his own life twice because both of his parents were excluded. And the decimation of that fam that household, um, obviously he, he became so stressed and upset, he tried to overdose the first time. Um, I, I can't go into too much details, obviously, about the individual case, but he was uh, they were refused by CAMS um, because his mother had left it for a week after the second attempt um, before she went to CAMS and uh, they said due to austerity cuts uh, they their criteria was that somebody had to have tried three times or more which is obviously disgusting mm. we had members who were relieved to be diagnosed with cancer as that meant they finally were eligible for some sort of support scheme uh, we've got uh, armed forces veterans who obviously risked their lives for our country um, one of our poster girls is Cheryl um, from Rotherham, and she served in Afghanistan, Iraq, Bosnia. Um, she drew some of her forces pension, and HMRC viewed that as income, and she got zero um, support. Um, Kim Kingston, an amazing beauty therapist down south, her husband died of a brain tumour just before COVID, and while she was clearing out the loft one day, she found uh, a pension uh, certificate that David had taken out years and years before and she decided to cash it in to support herself and her children and again HMRC viewed that as income so she got a zero support um, during Covid um, and yeah so, so, so it's been really hard even now we've got people that are being made bankrupt daily uh, we have businesses closing daily or have people having to cut staff, which therefore means there's more unemployment for the country. Uh, people are uh, crippled by bounce back loans. In fact, in the last two weeks, I've been dealing with four attempted suicides due to uh, the stress of trying to repay bounce back loans and the fact that there is no real light at the end of the tunnel because they've got six or eight or how, whatever their term is for the loan. Um, they can't pay it now, so they just don't know how they're going to pay it going forward until uh, they've paid everything off. Uh, and then obviously, like everybody, there's a cost of living crisis and a fuel hike. Um, but when you've got less than zero to start with, that is an extra stressor. Um, and it's pretty raw being called a fraud risk. Um, 
it, that is hard. And and your family and friends believe it and say, oh, you must have fiddled your taxes and um, oh, I don't know what you're moaning about. You should have got another job. Whereas we've looked at the ONS figures and uh, there are approximately 500,000 jobs vacancies uh, during the first wave of COVID. So what are the other 3.3 million people supposed to do, even if everybody, you know, the excluded took all those jobs? So, um, and then now we're expected to pay increased taxes to not only claw back the money from fraud, um, but pay for the support schemes that they, they didn't receive. Um, and after the event, I mean, uh, Dame Meg Hillier asked HMRC and HMT um, to do a report on the COVID uh, support finance schemes. And there's two statistics that had we known them at the time, we would have been screaming very, very loudly and more loudly than we already were. Um, because whilst the first three of the five size grants payments um, uh, were paid out, 3.5 billion were paid to those whose self-employment income did not reduce in 2020, 2021. Um, and for businesses, the spending on CGRS by October 2020 included 1.5 billion that were paid to employers whose turnover did not fall and who would not have cut their workforce even without the grant. So you, you, you can imagine, you know, that is a real kick in the teeth when you were given nothing but you see that people that actually didn't need the money were, were given mm. the money. So that's really hard. So in terms of uh, what needs to happen then, so what? So obviously you've got nowhere with the current government, which is now mercifully at an end. In fact, Rishi yeah. Sunak in 2022 during the leadership contest uh, was a bit indiscreet at a few times. On one occasion was asked why he excluded these people and said, because they're not Tory voters. Yeah. Yep. Which is a vaguely bizarre thing to say about some people who will be self-employed. Um, so attention's now on the Labour government. What is it that you are asking them to do? Um, well, our members, we took a poll on this and, mm. and we took the top three um, asks from our members. And the first one was um, obviously you know, at the time we were asking this of the Conservative government in power, was an apology from the government. So this injustice um, was recognised. And reassurance that it wouldn't, you know, it never happen again. Uh, there's every likelihood that as the virus uh, mutates and evolves, that there would be another pandemic and maybe another lockdown. What we cannot risk is that the same uh, support schemes are just re-implemented and the excluded are excluded again. Um, we, we need reassurance, obviously, that there will be support schemes put in place, um, you know, lo like the, the, the schemes uh, that, that we put forward um, to, you know, to, to suggest the best way to uh, resolve the issue, which, which were also turned down. Um, the second thing uh, that they'd like is parity of support. We don't see why we shouldn't have fair and equal support um, as the others uh, got. Um, and to get that uh, money back would uh, plug a bit of a gap um, in what is quite a seismic chasm um, in finances, uh, because obviously with, with the debts they've taken on, there's interest. So, you know, John Cordwell, um, who famously was a major, the major Tory donor who's now supporting Keir Starmer, he said nobody should be poorer coming out of the pandemic than when they went in. Um, and obviously this is not the experience that Excluded have had and he is very, very supportive um, of us and doesn't see why we shouldn't have the same level of support that other people got. Um, and the third ask is uh, the acknowledgement, you know, of loss of earnings and profit and the consequential loss um, because people didn't invest in their companies and now are not in a position um, because they're paying off debt, et cetera, et cetera. So th those are the, the three asks that um, we would like the incoming government to mm. consider. Um, Presumably yeah. the top priority would be, so you've mentioned that there are people who are, 
you know, they're, they're entering insolvency type situations now. Would yeah. there, so would there be a particular priority? Because because for these people, like every week counts, presumably. Um, so is there Definitely. a priority to it, even if you can't get the government to commit to um, full compensation as such, at least to do what they can to put the immediate fires out in the first yeah, instance? Yeah, acknowledge, yeah, acknowledge it as well. And it's not just, it's not just uh, like, like Jen said, it's not just small businesses, it's industries as mm. well. So you've got live events, obviously, I'm a PAY freelancer in it, one of 350,000 who wasn't entitled to furlough, size, bounce back loads, any kind of support. And and they've literally been crucified ever since the beginning of the pandemic. So they've had Brexit, they've had the pandemic, the cost of living crisis, many of them work in TV and film, so they've had the strikes on that. They uh, many are using food banks. It's not all glorious out there. Look. Forty-seven festivals have closed, cancelled so far this year. Closed down, according to the Association of Independent Festivals. Uh, TV and film charity are still giving out one-off grants so people can put food on the table and feed their families. Uh, they're they're in real financial trouble. Uh, they reckon there could be another hundred by 100 festivals by the end of this summer. So you're looking at least two, 300 probably since the pandemic. Mm. So that's more work gone for freelancers who definitely need it. So yeah, this, and, and so that's, it's, it's covering, so it's, there's a massive impact for like a lot of people and in industries out there. And it's only going to get worse if, if like Martin Lewis said in the pandemic many times, if you don't help the excluded, it's going to cost the government yeah. longer in the long run because they're going to be a burden on the state yeah so it, and it would be cheaper to to bail not bail bail these people out and say right we're going to put money back into these people's pockets mm. they're going to clear off their debts that money is going to go around in a circle it's going to help struggling pubs shops and everything else and at the end of the day all the money will go back to the treasury in the long run it's not going to be sitting there no, like they people did with furlough and still and, 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 and still getting furlough and earning an income, so it will boost the economy. It will bring down the unemployment figures, which have which have gone up again. Debt was uh, it was announced yesterday that that debt has gone up again, and you can basically you can partly blame that on the excluded, one hundred percent. So yeah, so it's, there's all these different factors as well, and it's like I said to you last year outside the uh, Labour yeah. conference. So, when Rachel Reeves had made, uh, announced the COVID corruption commissioner. And mm. I said that you remember, I said to exactly. many MPs and industry leaders like the NTIA, how about ring fencing a certain amount mm. and for the, of the clawback money and giving it to the excluded. So there's like Jensen, there's many different, they've got all the solutions there and that was another solution. So yeah, it's as yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, I said to you at the time that that for me would have been, a, you know, a, an interesting move that, because Labour are committing to chasing down what, what was, because there was fraud. It wasn't oh, from the 33.8 million excluded. There was COVID fraud. A lot of it's in plain sight. Uh, only Michelle Moan at the moment is the focus of it. And mm -hmm. Labour are committing to chasing down as much as they can. And yes, there's a lot of um, pressures on any money that Labour can raise. But at the end of the day, you're talking about covering what should have been covered and what Labour at the time called to be covered at the time, using the money. I mean, if they're clawing back that money, it was the money from that budget anyway. Yeah. Jennifer, actually, an interesting question has just occurred to me. So you mentioned earlier on about the furlough scheme being relatively generous from an international point of view. Yeah. Are you aware of any other major economies that are having this problem at the moment where a tenth of their workforce have been completely cut out? No. So this um, is a political choice then, isn't it? It's, yeah, not, a, it's not a circumstance of awkward situations. No, no, it's definitely No, no, no. And actually, um, Rishi Sunak ad admitted in House of Parliament, Eddie Reeves uh, posed a question um, in the chamber uh, about the excluded. And, and he actually said this is a policy decision. Um, so, so we have that admission. And also the video that you mentioned earlier mm. where uh, Rishi Sunak said, oh, well, they probably weren't conservative voters anyway and actually what he was he was talking to two people that uh, were, were conservative members so he really doesn't know his audience um but uh, and jesse norman who um 
went to an APPG meeting where uh, Rebecca Seeley Harris, who is, is very well renowned in her field and actually used to work for the Treasury, um, put forward the, 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 the solutions um, uh, that were completely poo pooed by uh, Jesse Norman. And, and we wrote an open letter uh, to the Treasury, and Jesse Norman replied. And uh, three times on one page, he mentions this being a fraud risk, which is quite insulting and quite rich, actually, coming from a party who we we see what they've been up to yes. and more and more revelations come out every day. Mm. Yeah, it's because it occurs to me. So in terms of, because at the moment, the Labour leadership, there are MPs in Labour and MPs in other parties who are supporting you, explicitly supporting you, yeah. uh, but not party leaderships. It's not in like a manifesto anyway, as far no. as I'm aware. No, it's not um, on a party basis at all. No. no. So in terms of getting the 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 Labour leadership, should we say, as well as the Lib Dem leadership, if we're fortunate enough for them to be leading the opposition to mm. get on board with this. Um, I mean, ultimately, what there's two ways going about it, isn't there? One, we need to make it in their interest to to back it, even if because I can understand how they could be a little bit overwhelmed by the scale of where it will end up, but at least you know, something like you say, that acknowledgement and also dealing with the people who are, because some people w might be 20, 30 grand in the hole, but have, but have sort of moved on. And then there'll be other people who haven't and who are still facing those major problems to at least support those in the first instance. So in terms of if people were to contact their MPs, um, and I'll put details in the description below how people can do that, or I say candidates at the moment, but ones who may become MPs, so in terms of the main points you would you would want them to get across, the first one could be the fact that this is a large number of people who are who will it will be easier for them to be economically active again to their potential if they are given this support of not having unpayable debts hanging over their head that should never have existed in the first place, presumably. Yeah. Um, yeah. there's also the fact that what, what we're asking Labour to do is not magic up more money they're recovering money from that year's budget anyway that was that was defrauded yeah. So and Labour at the time called for a proper support scheme and yeah. that all we're asking them to do as you say as Tim said is ring fence some of it to to, to cover that compensation and then the other side of it, as you've just said there, this was not a problem in other countries. So if you if you could think to yourself, this is just one of those awkward situations which was just caused by circumstance. If if other countries didn't fall into this trap, why did we? And as you've yeah. noted, Rishi Sunak on at least two occasions in two different ways has acknowledged that he made a policy decision to exclude these people. It didn't have to be done. And therefore... No. Labour don't have to do it. And then finally, of course, your main point, because it, it doesn't even necessarily matter about COVID. I mean, we we have been expecting a pandemic. since it's, it's been the number one threat to the nation, according to the Conservative government since 2010. They weren't expecting a SARS-based pandemic. They were expecting a flu, but, but they were expecting a global pandemic that could shut the economy down. It was the number one threat, which means the threat still exists. Yeah. And if we do have another pandemic, we can't have another situation where we're flapping about we need a system in place that is there should it happen again and should another lockdown be needed and at the moment that is not the case and nor is there a plan which That's is it. which has been which has been verified by the world health organization as mm. well that they they've touched on that uh, heavily and said that most apart from like asia and all that we've always been prepared for it the western world even after the pandemic they're still not prepared for the next one. They've mm. still got no procedures in place at all. Yeah. So, in terms, so that in terms of uh, you know lobbying Labour, so you will have, by the sounds of it, you'll have some MPs who should be able to make representation in Parliament along those lines. We could get people to contact their progressive candidates to also back it. In terms of generating lots of public support. Um, the COVID inquiry is ongoing. It's very wide ranging. It's going to be ongoing for quite a long time by the sounds of it. 
Yeah. Is there a particular point you're looking at which will help resonate this if there's still no solution in, say, the next year or so? Is there a particular part of the COVID inquiry you'd look to target? Um, well, obviously, the financial module is one that we're particularly interested in uh, what that will be addressing. Um, we've encouraged all our members to put their stories forward so that um, hopefully uh, the vast amount of uh, stories about being excluded would suggest to the people uh, putting the module questions together that there is something definite to be answered there. And we do push this quite regularly into the group, you know, have you put put your story forward? Uh, ha have you contacted your MP or now candidate to let them know your personal situation? We have a template letter um, that, that we give people so that they can see a structure um, and also it gives the history of Excluded UK and accurate uh, statistics because um, you know, we don't like people rounding uh, rounding the figure up to nearly four million because that's you know we lose our credibility if yeah, we, yeah, we start sure. embellishing numbers. Um, but we do actually say to people, please put your personal story. Um, you know, MPs are just going to switch off if they get the copy and paste letters that we criticise the government for sending us. So um, you know, let, let, let's look a bit smarter than that. Mm. Um, but also, we don't have an advertising budget. We're a group of volunteers that are lobbying the government on behalf of 3.8 million people. None of us have ever done this before. It's obviously something quite unique to put on our CV. Mm. Um, but uh, it's really important that the word of mouth and particularly um, social media um, and media in general. I mean, I cannot um, emphasize enough what it meant to our members when Carol Vorderman gave us a one hour phone in on LBC um, a few weeks ago. Uh, the buzz in our Facebook group that people had actually felt like they'd heard, had a voice uh, because historically we don't feel like we've been yeah. listened to. Um, and when we have been listened to, it's very uh, frequent that people come back with criticism uh, rather than uh, sympathy. Uh, even in our own families and friends, people don't get it. Um, and also, it's um, it's human nature that it's unpalatable to think about. You look the other way. Uh, and that has been most definitely the case. I don't know an excluded UK member that hasn't felt alienated by their own family and friends in some way, shape or form. Um, and as I say, without an advertising budget, there are so many people in the world that do not know that they're excluded. They think that they had a rough deal through COVID and watch these other people have support schemes, but they don't realise they're called excluded and that there's a support group for them. So mm -hmm. again, we've been doing um, Q&A sessions with the candidates and um, historic MPs to engage them with Excluded UK, tell them who we are, what we do, why we do it, and uh, so that when they talk to uh, their constituents on the doorstep while they're campaigning, they can identify, oh, you sound like you're excluded. Have you heard of this you know, support group, mm -hmm. Excluded UK, who represent you and are campaigning on your behalf? Um, I mean, even only a few weeks ago, I was talking to one of my friends, um, and she said, oh, are you still doing that excluded stuff? And I said, yeah. And we had a chat about it, and then she realised that she was excluded and hadn't realised it all this time, even though I'd been telling her, you know, you need to join the group, blah, blah, blah. So it's really important that we get the message out there um, and that people join our group to make the noise bigger, because unless uh, we, we have a volume from a large number of people, people don't think it's an issue. You know, politicians don't think it's a you know, big issue. They just think there's a group of people that are whining in the background. Um, and yes, we all know that there is a cutoff uh, in, any, uh, in, in any situation. There has to be a line drawn. But 10% or 11% or whatever the calculation is, one in you know, however many people, um, it, it, that's unforgivable. Um, yeah. well, it's, it's one it, in nine people. It's one out of every yeah, nine person it, who was working. It, yeah, it, exactly. And uh, you just think, uh, yes, there has to be a line drawn, um, but it, you know, it, it, people were literally starving. Mm. Uh, the member welfare team were talking to people. There was one guy. He was living in his friend's shed, um, and he was having one pot noodle every other day because that's all he could afford, and he couldn't even afford that. His mate whose shed he was staying in mm. was buying him 
what he, you know the food that he could get um you know we've got families who had both uh, parents were excluded uh, we set up the covid support fund um uh, it was the 3rd of December 2020. I remember it because I was the one that set up the fund on GoFundMe um, because I was sat there watching my niece opening her birthday presents while I was on the telephone to a mother, uh, an excluded mother, who was crying down the phone saying, how can I tell my little girl that Santa hasn't put her on the naughty list because I can't afford presents, I can't mm -hmm. afford a stocking, I can't afford food. So... I put some money in her account because I was heartbroken for her. I'm very fortunate I was in a position to be able to do that. Um, but then set up the COVID support fund. Within 10 days, we'd raised £15,000 that we distributed amongst 153 of the most desperate families in the group so that they did have a, a Christmas. We carried that fund on. Um, and uh, over the time that we ran it, there's over £50,000 that we distributed um, amongst people that desperately needed the money. We didn't do it for medals or adoration or anything. We did it because it's the right thing to do, and it's actually what the government should have been doing. Hmm. What's, what is disheartening as well, Phil, is, uh, as you've probably seen, and over the last three years, even when me speaking with the MPs outside of Parliament and the conferences and... I mean, there must be thousands of tweets a week to to the Labour leadership, to over all this time, emails, and they're just totally ignoring it. And especially in the election campaign that he's had time and time again, all not just Keir Starmer, we're talking Ed Davey, we're talking Stephen Flynn, John Swinney, mm -hmm. that they so many times they could have called uh, Rishi Sunak out and said, no, but you haven't. You've excluded yeah. 3.8 million people. But it's like we we spoke to a Labour candidate the other day, and they go, "You're just being ghosted by my party." And I'm like, "Yeah, exactly. We are. We're being totally ignored." And I had a conversation with John McDonnell about nine weeks ago outside Parliament. I said, "John, I've got a question for you. Have you been whipped to not mention the exclusion?" He goes, "Not what I've heard. But I will go back and ask." And it's yeah, we, they'd rather ignore us. Because if it's going to cost so much money when it's the costings, and they'd rather yeah. ignore us. But at the end of the day, just acknowledge us and and say, "All right, we acknowledge this is a scandal. We will look into it. We'll, we can give you. We'll 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 do it in stages. We'll, we'll work through. We'll say, right, that's the easy fix. Your there's your tax record. Your PAYE or whatever. Right, we'll pay you off. Then we'll look at it." In, look at it in stages over time when they can generate the money or whatever they do because at the end of the day it's, it's a political choice but they'd rather ignore us but then you but then i always look at them like but then they go as oh, government debt it's government debt i'm like it's not government debt it's 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 called balance in the books it's a political choice you know it's like they, they can find money to paint a plane they can find money to to stick into Trident and spend billions, send billions of pounds abroad, but they can't look after their own people who have committed suicide. Mm. Or like we've had four suicide attempts in the last two weeks, I think it is, isn't it, Jen? And, yeah. and those things like that. It's like, look at people at home. They're suffering unimaginable hardship. I know I get on a daily basis. Jennifer gets on a daily basis. People, I'm in 80,000 pounds of debt. I'm closing my business down. I feel like like last someone last night goes. I feel suicidal. I can't even drive in a car. I'm ashamed of my country, and I I don't know what to do from minute to minute. And it's that they're just totally ignoring all of this, and it's and it's and, it, and obviously that's bringing up people's mental health even more because a lot of people try have tried to put it behind them after campaigning day in day out through the pandemic, and now they're seeing the the Tories turn around and saying. Oh, but we've done we've done so much of this, and it's mm. like, and they're totally ignoring it. It's like yesterday I saw we saw a, I saw a message uh, from a guy up in uh, Blaby in Lutterworth in Leicestershire, and he, uh, and uh, his candidate Albert Alberto Costa turned around. He said, "What are you going to do for the exclusion?" He goes, "I've never heard of the exclusion." And I'm like, "Yeah, you have, because I've sent you. I've personally sent you thousands of tweets in the pandemic. You've had many of emails, and they still." pretend that we don't exist and no one's challenging them as an opposition party. Mm. Yeah. To be only to be fair, 
um, the Liberal Democrat Party by far oh, yeah, have been Liberal the most Democrat, supportive. Yeah. Um, we, we had a meeting with uh, Lord Richard Newby, who is one of the policy and manifesto um, team, um, and he was really, really lovely and sympathetic yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, said, you know, I can't, policy, I can't promise that you'll be part of our manifesto because our manifesto is very high level, um, but um, I can go back and, you know, have a look at the different aspects um, of, of the issues that we, we could um, look at, you know, uh, uh, in, in due course. Um, and uh, we've had so many Liberal Democrat uh, uh, former MPs and current candidates that have engaged with us. We yeah. do have um, quite a few Labour candidates mm. um, and SNP uh, who were on the APPG. They're still supportive. We're really sad to lose Caroline Lucas from the Green Party because she was the only Green MP, obviously. Mm. She's a huge supporter, came to the protest on 30th of September 2020. Um, Ian but Blackford. then, the, yeah, Ian Blackford, again, uh, just, yeah, uh, um, amazing, amazing guy. And then, you know, um, Monday, 24th of June, this coming Monday, uh, we have um, Andy Burnham coming on a live stream with me. Um, to, to talk about, you know, Excluded UK, four years on, uh, what's happening, what we expect from the new government. Um, Steve Rotherham, uh, Metro Mayor of mm. Liverpool. Again, some very high profile people, um, Sadiq Khan, you know, a lot of Metro Mayors that we've done live events with. Um, but to have all these amazing people, uh, including you know, Martin Lewis, Gina Miller, backing us, but still not going any further forward is really, really frustrating yeah. and disheartening. What you need is when the Treasury Select Committee forms is to um, get those on board or get some of yeah. them on board because then it'll... Because yeah. yeah, there's exactly, nothing to stop yeah. that. I mean, you, I mean, any group of MPs can actually just get together and decide. That MPs have got the authority for large... It doesn't have to be that massive a number. Like 20 of them can get together and say, we're going to... Um, we're going to have a report authorised on this. But if yeah. you could get, you know, those who end up on the Treasury Select Committee on board, then um, they could certainly push the government. So, you know, you, you can have it from two angles. If the Liberal Democrat, I mean, we're not, we know we're not going to get anything from the Conservatives. If the Liberal Democrats do get to lead the opposition, um, then if there's a significant number of Liberal Democrat MPs who want to make a deal of that, they can make sure that they're or they can try and make sure that their leadership makes an issue of it after all let's face facts first few months of pmqs is not going to be a lot to ask here Starmer about anyway is there can't no. ask him about yeah. his record he ain't got one so yeah. they might as well ask about things like this and uh, and then when the treasury select committee gets on board again you know this because if you think about it like in labor's manifesto they're 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 underlining now a number of historical injustices yeah, you know, you've yeah. got the miners' pension fund, you've got Orgreave, Windrush, things like Low that. Well, God. this is this is like the next one building up. Yeah. So you know, there would be a lot of support in there. It's just a case of getting the people with the loudest voices to sort of get on board with it, isn't it? Yeah, and obviously we've also got the 1950s WASPy women that are also excluded. So they've had yeah. this double whammy, um, and and so we really feel for for them too. Uh, and um, yeah, like you say, infected blood, postal scandal, waspies. There's a whole catalogue. You know, yeah. uh, we could make a film of films yeah. about how many scandals and injustices that there there have been. Um, and we just think with a with a refreshed government, it's about time to clear those up and make yeah. politics respectable again. Because our experience and the other campaign groups that we have contact with, their experience has been very dismal and not reflective of um, being <clears throat> great britain um you know people don't feel very proud at the moment to to, to be um british and i think we we really need to get that back and, and putting these injustices right is the first step um you know for that progress and especially yeah. as labor they go on that they're the party of small businesses and workers they want to rebuild the country and they want to unite everyone together and those three things is 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 basically saying right we're going to get rid of all these scandals and we're going to start a, we're going to start completely fresh slate and then they and then that's all gone away so yeah 
Well, it's like I say, I, I would have thought it would have been a really good campaign line uh, for this election, but obviously they've disagreed. I, mean, I suppose the last thing would be the media, because they could choose to make an issue of this. Do you think they're... Because obviously they've done it in fits and starts. I mean, I've even seen mention of it in the Daily Express in, back in the day. Mm. Yeah. But it's not, it's not exactly a campaign going on. Do you think they'd be more likely if... You know, when we're sort of hoping, at least, that a Labour government is a much calmer government and there are fewer scandals and less drama. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's more motivation then for the media to decide this is a thing to get behind? I think it depends what's going on at the time. I mean, mm. I get interviewed for every one article that's published. I've probably had 10 interviews. Um, it, it, you know, media are like magpies. If there's something more sparkly somewhere else that, yeah. that, that you know, or a bigger story, they're, they're, they're off there. But I would hope, like you say, um, if there's less scandals and less big news, we might actually be able to put our head above the parapet and, um, and say, you know, please, please, can you mention us? Um, but we're still getting at the moment, you know, people saying, oh, God, are you still banging on about that? Why can't you just let it go? And it's like, well, if you were in our position, you wouldn't let it go. Mm. Um, same as, you know, the, the post office. Yeah. Uh, so postmasters, mm. you know, it's been 20 years since the first person um, reported to, about the problem with Horizon. Um, you know, I really am hoping we don't have to do this in 20 yes. years. Time. Well, that's exactly uh, it, isn't it? That's <laughs> what well, I meant about there's so many. There are yeah. so many historical, going back decades, of scandals yeah. that have just been left. Yeah. And and the last thing you want is to look at this and go, is this going to be the one that has to... Because, you know, as you say, it, it's, it's quicker and easier... Well, it's obviously quicker, but it's easier and often cheaper to deal with it earlier, even yeah. given we know what the economic pressures are on the next government, but it's still... But I mean, that's the other thing. I suppose getting more people, like you say, there's some excluded who maybe don't see themselves, getting more people organised. Because, I mean, if you had actually even half of the three, if you had like 1.9 million of you all yeah. sending these emails to yeah. candidates and then MPs, that would be a hell of a lobby group. I mean, so we, I don't, we don't even have, we don't yeah. even have um, 100,000 members. Mm. And this, again, has been the argument with, uh, with the MPs. You know, well... Um, if people are that bothered, why have you only got 50,000 yeah. members across social media? And we keep saying we haven't got an advertising budget. People don't know we exist. Right. And if the media do not pick it up and advertise it, when the media do advertise it, um, the influx of new membership is amazing and it's really heartening. But the fact that, you know, as I say, I'll do, do 10 interviews and one maximum is mm. published from that. Ten. It's a lot of my time that being self-employed, I could well do yeah. building you know, my business up, um, but I'm doing it on behalf of the 3.8 million people. Mm. So it's quite disheartening when we haven't got, like you say, even half of that number yeah. um, to, to bang, bang the drum. Um, so yeah, we, we do need more members to make um, more noise, but we also need the media to be, um, a bit more brave about uh, putting our story forward. I think because it's been so easy to criticise um, the excluded and say, uh, you know, they, they've believed the hype that Rishi Sunak um, was gushing about, oh, you know, their, their fraud risk, their this, that, that, and the other. Um, people have believed it. And so, you know, daily on, on particularly on uh, Twitter, I find very toxic, but, um, but um, daily on, 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 on Twitter, we're defending our members. Um, you know, Tim Tim's constantly sending me links. You know, I've put a comment on this, but can, can you put it, you oh. know, from Head of Excluded UK uh, and, and try and make people see, but uh, it, it's, it's just impossible sometimes to get it through to people. This really did happen and it could happen to yeah. you. And now what people are seeing is the truth coming out about how divisive um, and um, unbelievable sometimes Rishi Sunak and his government were. And it's like, um, I think we told you that four years ago. Yeah. And we don't want to say I told you so. Yeah. We just want people to believe our story, get behind our story and see that the right thing to do is put it back. Put it right. Yeah, yeah it's Let, only just it's, back it's to like where I they said, were. Yeah, like Jennifer said, it's only just people are starting to realise, oh, this actually happened. Mm. But yeah. but they be because they listen to the mantra, and now they're 
because everyone's, as you see on Twitter, everyone's against the Tories. And I am hoping that once the Tories are removed from power, then the then the, the, the focus will be on people like the excluded and the yeah. loan charge scandal and the waspies and said so these people are actually really suffering. Yes. What are you going to do about it? Yeah. But well, like we know, it's not going to happen until July the fifth when the Tories are removed because no one. Can, I can put up a I can put up a tweet about we've had oh we've had another four suicides in the last two weeks, and and you get and no one cares. But then you then you get someone putting up a picture of Sunak or the Tories and they are swearing at them and then they'll get like two million likes and you're like you know it's just it's, 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 it's I just can't work how mad. the public how the public thinks it is unfortunately a bit mad. So there we are. Hopefully that gets you up to speed with the major issues affecting these people. It's a lot of people. It was about 11.5% of the workforce. People that were abandoned by Sunak for purely political reasons, many of whom have been unable to recover. It wasn't a consequence of the extraordinary situation. It was a political choice. It remains a political choice. If you'd like to get involved, there are links in the description below. You could contact your new MP once they've been installed to let them know about the issues. Remember, there are going to be a lot of new MPs. These are MPs who were not in Parliament around for this issue. They may not know about this issue, so contact them about it. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe for further content and click the like button. You can also sign up for memberships if you'd like to support the channel further. Thanks for watching and until next time, I'll see you later.